okay. Thanks for tuning in. Greetings. I'm going to share some. Um, she said, he said. But I don't have no reason to lie. Uh, someone that I used to fellowship with. Uh, in the Christian world she was telling me about um, a particular pastor she was upstairs talking to him about something and he stated to her you think I care about them niggas downstairs <laughs> this is he said she said but I I believe I was 99.9%. .9 he said it. Because they know. <laughs> they know ain't nothing to it. This, 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 this Christianity stuff. Because when you think about Noah's Ark, <laughs> it was talking about elephants. Do you know how much water they drink and how much grass they have to eat a day? And then you're going to take two elephants on there for 40 days and 40 nights. Just let that grab you right there. But anyway, yeah, he said, um, allegedly he said, she said, quote, unquote, all that, you know, allegedly he said. But I believe it because i I seen the person. I know who she's talking about. I don't put it past them because they know. A lot of them probably don't, maybe 2%, but if they went to any kind of college or university and came back home and just took over the business, because that's what it is, a business. And then they, I remember when they start allowing their uh, wives to be co-pastor, even though she wasn't ordained or called. How's she going to be co-pastor when she's not a pastor? They just started letting political politics get in there. And I knew that was, this is some BS right here. Because she's your wife, she be get to, you know, get partay half. She's not. It didn't make sense to me. It was a business. It's a business, though. It's an organization. That's what it is. So now it makes sense. Absolutely. I was looking at it from. Uh, a religious point of view because it wasn't spiritual. It was religious point of view. And they were looking at it as an organization of business because they are the ones that know it's nothing to it. It is a business organization. And that's what they have to do. Carry it on that way because what else are they going to do if they come out and admit to the people that it's a farce? But I said all that to say this. Um... I remember years ago, Bishop Carlton Pearson, <laughs> he was a dynamic, uh, a Pentecostal, mega church uh, bishop. Ooh, and I had all his, uh, all his CDs. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> it was something there when you put that, uh, Carlton Pearson on Azusa Street 1, 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> You're going to move. But I remember him. And I remember um, a member asking me one time, what made him a, a backslide like that? Because they call you a, a what they call a pariah. Uh, when you, um, because he started including homosexuals and said the devil was going to be saved and all religions are one. There is just not one religion. He had started trying to break it down. And they uh, ostracized him. Because that's what cults do. <laughs> when you break away, like me, from the foe. <laughs> they shun you. They ostracize you. They say you never had it. But anyway, you just wake up. He has become enlightened somewhat. But he went back into it a little bit. He went down from 5,000 members to 1,000. But yeah, several years ago, Bishop Carlton Pearson said that 
sent, said things that sent shockwaves through the black church. Um, he publicly stated there is no such thing as hell. And he embraced homosexual men and women. <laughs> yeah, sanctified people lost their mind. <laughs> Who was sleeping with somebody else's husband and drinking and smoking and doing everything else that anybody else does. But this was within the organization. You have to be holy. You have to not let your secrets be known. That's what they saying. Because, you know, you know, they just regular folks. But Pearson questioned the doctrine of his faith and made a public argument for the inclusion and the validity of all religions. That did not sit well with leaders of the Pentecostal faith. They denounced his new thoughts and ideology and banished Pearson. Don't that sound like a cult? Where is the love? <laughs> Don't Jesus forgive? They banished him. That sounds like some Old Testament OT stuff. I'm glad they didn't stone him. He said, uh, God is not a Christian nor a Jew, Muslim, Hindu. God dwell with us, in us, around us, and us. He was trying to awaken. He stuck with a little bit of it. And uh, a member, she, she was upset about it. She said, we call each other saints. <laughs> we were sinners. Don't forget to look at that TV program, Saints and Sinners, because it surely tells you what Saints and Sinners is about. But we called each other saints. And, uh, why do you think he did that? And she... <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. He pros the concept of hell and purpose that is not the fiery underworld pit of conventional teaching but a human creation used to terrify masses into behaving as their religion institutional guardian desires. He had it right. He was waking up. Some religious circles is that he doesn't believe in hell anymore, which, says is, which he says is both true and false. Okay. He was a successful gospel recording artist, like I said. Whew. He was good. I don't know if he's doing that now, but um, he began questioning the doctrines of your faith. Um, okay. He didn't believe in the concept of eternal damnation. And like I said before, Christians don't either because when they love one's past who live like they quote, say the devil, they put them in heaven anyway. So, he said, why would a loving God do that? Put somebody in hell. Um, he said, the concept of hell and the devil are pagan concepts borrowed from the surrounding neighbors of Old Testament Israel. Some will argue that you had it all. You were a mega church bishop. Yet after you spoke out, you lost a huge portion of your members and your church building and property was sold in order to avoid foreclosure. He suffered, but he gave it up. He suffered alienation and abandonment. And that sounds like the JWs, that's what they do. They will stop speaking to their mama and their children if you turn on the organization. It was like starting all over at half a century old. I kept my fears to myself, which made it all the more lonely. They ostracized him. They turned their back on him. These Christians, these saints, sinners. He said he was lonely in a frightening period in his life. <laughs> Where was the love? Equate pastors to colonizers. I do. They work with colonizers. These pastors keeping the people enslaved. When they know, like I said, some of them know. How can you just look out there at those members like that? Those poor sheep. 
and not tell them the truth. Because then where would you get your money, your income, you and your co-pastor and your children? So you continue to lie to the people. But that's what we do. We do that to our own. Because a lot of that is going on right now in politics, in Africa, everywhere. Every, but it's happening with everybody. I thought that we were the only sambos, but there are sambos in every tongue, nation, everywhere. You can find someone to turn on their people. But I don't know how I got off to that. But yeah, it was open season to hunt for Bishop Carlton Pierce. I remember I didn't get involved in it. And I didn't even have an answer for my friend when she said, why you think he did that? She was very upset about it. I had no comments about it. Because at that time, I was still searching to go into a different apostolic Pentecostal church every Sunday, looking, searching for something to grasp me, to make it really, truly real in my soul because it was losing ground. Things were beginning to, you know, the ancestors were fluttering around me even then because I was like, I was finding fault. But I still kept going because like I said, religion is a stronghold of the mind. I was trying to get it. Somebody was calling me. Somebody was calling me. But, um, yeah, he went into that. As a son of God, that their law stated that we are all gods or divinities. He, he, he still kept a lot. But I just want to say that, um, it's a, it's horrible that they know what they doing to these poor black people. Some of them try to have schools that you have to pay for instead of making it free for um, all your members, not building up the community. You, you just sit in your gold mine in the middle of hell on MLK Boulevard, 12. 10, 5 mile, 7 mile, 8 mile, 9 mile. No, that's, that's, a, yeah, it's, that's rough there too. All these churches on every corner. But I'm going to end with that. And just, just wake up to Noah's Ark. Think about all the animals from the North Pole. The llama from the South America. So Noah came to South America and got two llamas or, and then camels. They have animals specifically de designed in different parts of the world. And think about the fresh water and the salt water. Did that merge and just kill all the marine life? And then when he landed, so these animals walked back to their designated place, not being eaten by the jaguars and the two lions and the two tigers and the two, you know. Think about just break down, break, go through in your mind. Break it down. The Noah's Ark story. And if you can make some sense out of that, then maybe you should stay in it. But just break it down. Think about it. Think about all the insects. Male and female. And then they said the clean animals, he had to bring seven of those for the sacrifice after they land. <laughs> But somebody has said too, oh, I love FB. It's powerful. Such a great teaching too. If it was just Noah and his family, and when they landed, it was some incest going on. Yeah, but I guess they could do it back then. But my things was, 
if Adam and Eve had three sons, Cain, Abel, and Seth. So Abel killed uh, Cain or Cain killed Abel, whichever way. I don't remember. I'm trying to forget all this shit. And, and so he went off and married who? If it was just Adam and Eve and they three sons. <laughs> Come on. Hey. Anyway, people. Peace. If you can find it. Like, share, leave a comment. I know I step on a many toes. But I gotta keep it real. I just, like I said, I'm speaking into my diary. This is me. I can't be nobody but me. If I don't be me, who will? And I speak, uh, because they allowed me to. So I speak for my parents, Albert and Lil, and my son. Peace, people, if you can find it. Like and share and leave me a comment. I appreciate you listening. And this is a long one. Who's who going to listen to all of this? But I hope you do. Peace.